The Fishing News is brought to you by Navionics, Okuma, Yozuri, Evinrude, Lama Glass, and the Star Island Yacht Club in Montauk, New York. It's football season, so says Phil at the tackle box as boaters are chasing those fat Alberts, the false albacore, tunny, little footballs all along the Jersey coast, North Jersey coast especially, although we're not getting any surf reports of landed false albacore just yet. It's only a matter of time. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. I know it's fall and NFL season is two weeks in, it's football season, but I'm here in the middle of a baseball stadium. Go figure. Well, I'm at First Energy Field in Lakewood, Lakewood Blue Claw Stadium, the minor league team. And this is where we're going to be, the Fisherman Magazine, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for the Jersey Shore Boat Sale and Expo. Friday from 11 to 6, Saturday 10 to 6, Sunday 10 to 5. Come on out and see us. Lakewood Blue Claw Stadium in Lakewood, New Jersey. It's a great little show presented by the Marine Trades Association of New Jersey because you have new and used boats for sale out here. A lot of inventory, a very affordable show, all local. It's great. And again, we're going to be here all weekend. Of course, you also have a big event out on Long Island this week, Thursday. Short period of time. I hope you're watching this video on Thursday. But we have the Fisherman Magazine's Surf and Inshore Show. It's an annual event held at the Huntington Hilton, Melville, Long Island, Melville, New York. If you plan to hit the road this weekend to get in on some of that Montauk surf action, definitely leave a little early Thursday, head out to the Huntington Hilton. This is a great show with gifts to the first 600 people, a lot of seminars, real big surf focus for that particular show. Now, most local weather forecasts for the weekend ahead call for mostly dry weather. Looks like uh, a little bit of uh, wind, some light westerlies for most of the part but the weekend itself looks pretty dry all the way through Monday. Of course, Saturday, September 21st is our last day of the fluke season here in New Jersey. I know last week, a couple of people pointed it out. I mistakenly said it was September 23rd was the last day. I guess I was hoping to get a couple extra days in, but no, it's Saturday. This Saturday is your final day of fluking in New Jersey for 2019. And the good news is there are some big fluke out there that have been biting all throughout the region, north, central, and south. These final days of fluking every year seems to produce some of those biggest fish in that deep water, Ambrose Channel, out on along the Rare, and of course some of the structure in North Jersey, the rattlesnake and some of those reef structures. On the big mohawk out of Belmar last week, actually, Vinny Bazaz of Matawan. He hit a 14 and a half pounder, one of the biggest fluke of the 2019 season. That was September 12th. Bucktail and gulp combo, proving that there are some big fish outside the inlets. Meanwhile, out of Manasquan, the Mills brothers were all smiles this week with a nice seven and a half pound fish on the Jamaica 2. And we do have some wind and waves have made a mess of things in the last couple of weeks. That's bound to happen this time of year. Some of the boats are finding it difficult to sail. I know the Carolyn Ann out of Barnegat Light. She's not sailing Wednesday, Thursday, but plans to hit it hard for those last couple of days of fluke, Friday and Saturday. Meanwhile, Delaware anglers, you know the deal, the Delaware guys, they have fluke season that goes throughout the entire season. They don't have a closure, and they do have some fish inshore as well. At Lewis Harbor, Peyton Bailey checked in with his 24-incher he caught in the canal on White Gulp. Now, out of Cape May, in that Cape May area, there's still some good fish coming. We reported on a big fish uh, down out of hands to bait and tackle last week. Captain Mike on the Miss Chris said, in addition to those final days of fluke, there are still some blues, kingfish triggers, and even weak fish in the mix as well. And that variety bodes well for the day after. You know, what are you going to sail for on Sunday? Some folks are going through and posting new schedules starting Sunday. It looks like a bottom fish extravaganza until we get that black sea bass, especially in the first week of October. Now, speaking of weak fish, Roman Avila Sanchez checked in with me this week. He put his time in at night on the sedges behind Atlantic City, scored this nice weak fish on a plastic shad. Mullet, of course, are stacking up in the back bay. I was out on the open beaches a couple of days this past weekend, saw some mullet in the wash. Uh, it's only a matter of time before that mullet starts to move out the inlets and out along the front beaches, but they are stacking up in back 
which is producing a bite with those weak fish and also, of course, the stripers as well. Dan Schaefer of Insomniac Guide Service in South Jersey, he's been running live mullet, going out and casting live mullet in those, uh, in those back bays along the sedges and then running a live mullet on a bottom sweeper jig. Has been doing all right with the striped bass. Meanwhile, Dave at Absecan Bay running some of his charters for smaller schoolie sized stripers. He said gulp nemesis sometimes outfishes the live bait. Of course, you know Dave is a live bait guy, right? He's got a lot of live bait in the shop, but sometimes it's that gulp nemesis that works. He's been swearing by that for years. Of course, you got good action on those marshes back where the bass are feeding on mullet. Some of the options you might want to throw. Uh, a, a, a swing shad, a paddle tail, like the Kettle Creek swing shad. Um, the floating little neck popper, Stillwater Smacket Jr., or even a small stubby metal lip swimmer. Good mimics for some of those mullet in back. And of course, there's plenty of peanut bunker back there as well. If you just take your time, Get yourself some quiet time in the back, still water, uh, especially lower light conditions, dawn and dusk. You might be surprised at how many of those stripers are back there. It's going to start soon enough on those open beaches. All right. Uh, it might be time to do a little bit of prospecting. Jimmy Bonanno, for example, he was prospecting. He had the beach by himself this past weekend. Let me know he had some fish. He was throwing some of those metal lips and he was also throwing some tsunami shads. Find those mullet, you'll find some of those stripers, but don't chase the reports. Try to get out there and make them on your own. Now, I know someone who's got a pretty fresh report for us. It's George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Hey, thanks, Jim. You know, it's a little bit like deja vu. Just last week, we were talking about those stripers blitzing on top. This week, Matt Cav put a couple in the boat, blitzing on top, kept throwing those top waters. It's a great bite and a lot of fun. Now, just a note on some uh, lure selection. I've been throwing this Yozuri 3D prop bait, and I think it's just a fantastic bait for matching the hatch, hitting those alewives that, are, that are, these bass are feeding on. It's my new favorite go-to lure. Now, also talking about last week's report, we touched on the crappie, how they be starting to bite. Here's Eric Goodstock got into a couple of beautiful crappie. So that bite is starting to pick up as well. Lots of things happening, guys. Water's cooling down. Fishing's heating up. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. Now let's head east for a little offshore forecast where we know we've got the swordfish, other billfish, the marlin, and of course tuna offshore. In fact, Captain Joe on sauerkraut charters, he put Michelle here on her very first mahi by just heading out to the mud hole. So some of those pelagics can be found in the mud hole. But as far as your offshore forecast for the next several days, Baltimore to the Hudson looks a bit sketchy through Saturday. 7 to 11, 7 to 13, 4 to 7, on Saturday. It starts to settle down a little bit. That forecast for Sunday from NOAA looks to be three to fours. So you want to keep your eye on the weather forecast. It's a great time of year to get offshore. A lot of transition, but just finding those windows to get out there. That could be the big key. Now I covered that Manahawkin striper hearing uh, last week. There were about 84 attendees. That's on top of the 52 in Ocean City and eight of them in Roselle Park, close to 150 people. I heard 31 public comments total, and it was an equal 50-50 split between option 2A1, which was one fish at 35 inches, and the other option, A2, uh, A2 one fish from 28 to 35 inches. So it's a, it's a split that the division and our folks at the ASMFC are gonna have to figure out which of those options is going to be the best. Most supported the circle hook requirement that was discussed. There were a handful of people that did not want to see that circle hook requirement. I also heard a lot of talk about the need for spawning area protection for Hudson Raritan Bay bass. I will have a complete sum, uh, summary coming out in our October edition. We go to print next week with that October edition. See my editor's log. I wrap it up and discuss some of those different opinions that were being talked about at those three New Jersey hearings in the last several weeks. Now, if you're not a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine, you're not gonna get all the printed material. We have the 12 monthly issues. Subscribers also get 26 weekly copies. That's 38 copies a year. News, meeting info, uh, conservation and regulatory news, product reviews, of course, all those local how-to and where-to articles and all of the reports. You only get that as a subscriber when you get that print edition submitted to you in the mail. Now, this weekly video forecast does a pretty good overview, but as a member of the Fisherman Magazine, you get all that additional information delivered to your door. Don't forget, we're gonna be here at Lakewood Blue Claw Stadium in Lakewood 
its first energy field, the Jersey Shore Boat Sale and Expo, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Come over and see me Friday or first thing Saturday morning while I'm here. I'll hook you up with a free goodie when you get that subscription or if you renew your current subscription to the Fisherman Magazine. Good luck with those final days of fluking for 2019. And as soon as that's over, we'll get started with the striped bass fishery in earnest, I hope. Catch them up this weekend. We'll see you again next week at thefisherman.com. Win the incredible Steigercraft, Evan Rude, Lowrance Grand Prize Boat Package, and more in the Fisherman's 2019 Dreamboat Fishing Challenge. Get the details now at thefisherman.com.